Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about the Holy Shroud, um, often called the Holy Shroud of St. Mary, um, the Shroud of Jesus, and whatever. And first things first, we have to define what this is. It is, first of all, a literal, you know, shroud, a literal piece of cloth that covered and wrapped the body of Jesus, um, and that is custom for a lot of Hebrew can we even say Hebrew? I feel like it's more accurate to say Jewish. We're also talking about a form of Judaism that essentially doesn't exist anymore and has like evolved into like the modern form. Let's not get lost in the weeds, huh? <clears throat> So the Holy Shroud is first and foremost a literal shroud. Um, it's the one that has like the face of Jesus on it or whatever. Um, but it was a shroud that covered the body of Jesus after he died. Um, it is a sign of protection and purity and protects the body from a lot of other things. It is part of embalming and funerary traditions. The second thing we have to talk about is more of the metaphoric spiritual shroud, the one that can cover the entire world, the one that can cover you. And when we talk about the Holy Shroud in this way, we are talking about a very strong protection magic. And I'm going to use magic loosely here. It is a prayer. It is steeped in religious background and has its roots in Judaism and some of its stock in Christianity and its flowers and uh, fucking all kinds of shit. So it's hard to discuss and everybody has their own little nuance of what the shroud is, how you approach it, or if you even like use it or involve it. For our purposes here today, we are talking about the Holy Shroud as a form of protection, as a form of spiritual intervention, um, and one that is kind of more passive. Let me explain what I mean. The basic concept of the Holy Shroud is that it is a specific prayer that you pray over a piece of cloth. And now it's most often a head covering. Um, and it can be anything. Like I have on just a regular white beanie today. You can use a silk scarf or a cotton scarf. You can use absolutely anything. You can just say the prayer and sort of visualize this protective like covering over you of your body, your energetic body, your spiritual body, your astral body, you know, whatever we're fucking talking about. And I feel like the best way to help you understand what the fuck I'm talking about is to just share the prayer with you. So I'm going to share a few snippets of this prayer. It is a long one if you are interested in the whole one. The copy I have is in the Selected Prayers. You know I love to promo this book. It's just useful. It's just useful. I will say the Spanish translation is always better, but this one is pretty good. Let's get started and we'll read a couple excerpts. And then from those excerpts, I really want you to pull out the symbolism, to pull out the mysticism within these words. Really look deep, and you'll find what I'm talking about. Holy company of God, cover me and defend me from danger with the shawl of St. Mary, his mother. Hail Mary, gratia plena, dominicta tectum. Free me from all evil spirits. Christ conquers, Christ reigns, Christ will defend me from evil and danger. He who is just and Lord, only son of St. Mary, he who was born in Bethlehem on that solemn day, he who died for my sins, those who want to harm me shall not see me, their hands shall not reach me, their weapons shall not harm me, their ropes shall not bind me. God said those who address me with this prayer shall not become ill. I will defend you although you do not ask. Let me hit you with that again. God said, those who address me with this prayer shall not become ill. I will defend you, although you do not ask. Now can you see its usefulness in a time like this? <laughs> so first and foremost, this prayer is meant to cleanse, purify, and bless anything that is touching your head, that is touching your crown, that is touching your hair. Um, so that's its first purpose. Because like you really should be cleansing, purifying, praying over things that touch your head or your body or really anything else. It is a very good way to add layers of protection, of spiritual connection, and to prevent you from carrying on or trapping any kind of bullshit onto your head or in your hair or 
The way we wear our headwear can really fuck up our state of mind. Like, you can really trap energy under a ball cap and not even know that you did that shit. This prayer, the second thing that it begins to do is to place specific intentions over you. That you are protected from evil, that you are protected from danger, that you are protected from both evil spirits and evil intentions of human beings or whatever else. There is a special line that invokes God to protect you from being sick, even when you do not ask for it, and that is quite profound. Now, the real life thing is that in addition with praying that you don't get sick and praying for defense against illness, and you can name drop in there if you want to, you can name drop any specific things that you might be worried about if it gives you peace, but know that this is a kind of catch-all prayer, and that this is one that really should be added to your repertoire. It is best to use this prayer after you have taken a shower and you're getting ready for the day and you're beginning to either do your hair or really get dressed. This is the time to say this prayer over yourself, over your body, over your clothes. That way everything is protected, everything is spiritually charged and empowered. You want to do this if you are putting on a head covering before ritual, before reading, before sessions, before anything else. This is a very, very good protection prayer. Um, the way it invokes the Holy Company of God, it can call in your divine and benevolent guides as well. Um, so it tends to have layers, and this is really a very good prayer to give your guides consent. To give your guides consent and ask for their help to protect you, to shield you, and to guide you. Now, if you are praying to be protected from sickness, from, let's say you're going out and you have to go run some errands for the day and you are being, or you're feeling worried about getting sick, you may say this prayer before you go. You can say it in your car before you go into the store, you know, whatever you might have. Along with that though, you need to take physical steps to not get sick. You need to be social distancing, you need to be wearing a mask, you need to be washing your hands, you need to be doing all those things, like get on the vaccine waiting list, do your best, do your part, and God will do their part. I love using this prayer before I do a reading session, before I do my hair or anything else, because it just fills me with a sense of protection. It is very important when you are doing spiritual work, when you are doing anything in this realm, or you are a very spiritual person in general, which we all are. It is important to protect yourself. It is important to protect your energy, your body, and your spirit. This is one of the ways that you can take that into your hands. Now, again, I'm not going to read the whole prayer for you. Here's a little bit of it, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. It goes on to offer prayers to enhance the effect, to really call upon various saints and other powers to help in specific ways, whether it be cutting off enemies or driving them away from you or humbling the enemies and people who wish to harm you or absolutely destroying evil intentions before you. Um, there is also a part of this where you can ask these same saints, ask these same divine beings to bless your home, to bless the people in your home. So there is also this very excellent opportunity to send this protection to absolutely everyone, both your loved ones, the people around you, the people you don't love, and the people you don't fucking know. All this to say, the Holy Shroud Prayer is something that can be said regardless of denomination, regardless of Christian or not. Um, the spirits involved in these prayers do come from this Christian pantheon. However, they are grander than the religion itself, so don't let that stop you. You're allowed to change words in it. I do recommend you keep the intent, and I genuinely believe that this is one of the few prayers that I wouldn't change around a whole lot. I wouldn't add, I wouldn't take away. Sometimes I'll like spice it up a little bit. You know, you can name specific things you want to be protected from. You can ask your specific guides to protect you as well and invoke them with the prayer. All in all, it is just a very, very good prayer to add to your repertoire, to your list of prayers, to the, the to your tool bag of protection magic. 
that's all I have for you today. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for listening. It is peace I offer you, and it is in peace I leave you. Have a wonderful day.